who the Americans are using to promote the jab. So an unlikely figure has emerged at the center of the debate over vaccinating children against COVID-19, Sesame Street's Big Bird. Big Bird has had the jab. Predictably, the American right wing lost their mind. I told you 15 years ago, Sesame Street are a bunch of communists, and they're proving it once again. I stand by that assessment. Big Bird's a communist, Kermit's a Russian agent, and Cookie Monster did 9-11. <laughs> Sesame Street are communists. I must have missed that episode when Elmo went, Hey, kids, <laughs> who wants to learn about a society based on common ownership of the means of production? <laughs> No, you're Josh Whittaker. It's, <laughs> it's mad. Fox News even claimed this would happen to kids if they got vaccinated. Sadly, CNN did not show what happened to Big Bird later in the day. <laughs> How? How can they show that on the news? Nobody's had a COVID jab and vomited to death in an alley. Can you imagine that on British news? Don't take the jab, kids. Peppa Pig had it, and now her ass is a muddy puddle. <laughs> Mental. Next, they'll claim Big Bird was jabbed in Austria and show this. <laughs> Mind you. That presenter is not the sharpest. Later on, she was discussing wokeness. She couldn't tell the difference between the Netflix show You and herself. I'm not joking. <laughs> Look at this. You know, I was watching an episode of uh, You where measles came up. Wait, wait, wait. When did I mention measles? <laughs> I don't know. It was on You. Wait, what? What? <laughs> What was on me? What are you talking about? Right? Where is Brittany going to hearing what I'm saying? The I never had the measles. What's on you? <laughs> we never did a... <laughs> We never did a measles and vaccine episode. Am I? Is this a joke? I know. I it, it was on you. It was on you. I've never had, Raymond, I've never had measles. What are you talking about? Stupid. It was an episode of a show, Laura. Well, what's it called? You. You. It's called you. I've never done a show on measles. It's called you! How, man? Talking of which, over in America, it was Trump's State of the Union address. <laughs> Some people loved it. It was a beautiful speech. I think I'm hearing everything I want to hear from Trump. What's not to like? What's not to like? Others not so keen. I saw this as a, as a psychotically incoherent speech with cookies and dog poop. <laughs> well, that sounds like an awful tub of Ben and Jerry's. You can see why he's upset. It's pretty rich for Trump to suggest this. We must reject the politics of revenge, resistance, and retribution, and embrace the boundless potential of cooperation, compromise, and the common good. Compromise? Trump telling people to compromise makes as much sense as Liam Neeson hosting the Mobos. <laughs> so... What else was Trump banging on about? What do you think? Illegal immigration. Wall. Migrant children. Wall. Violent crime. Wall. 30,000 sex crimes. Wall. Killings. Murders. See-through steel barrier. Or wall. Meth, heroin, and fentanyl. Walls. Walls. And walls. I will get it built. No, you fucking won't. <laughs> He's... It's such a fearmonger. We need the wall to protect us from the Mexican terrorists. Bullshit! Americans are more likely to be killed by lawnmowers than foreign terrorists. <laughs> Sod Mexico, Trump needs a wall around B and Q. <laughs> Build a shed. Build a shed. <laughs> forget terrorists, forget lawnmowers. It's guns that are killing Americans. And what did Trump say about gun control in his 81-minute speech? Absolutely nothing, which is insane when they have more mass shootings than days of the year. And unbelievably, you are actually allowed to brandish a firearm in Georgia, even if you're blind. <laughs> now, I am all for equal opportunities. <laughs> but I would argue
argue that when you're blind, you bear off with a Labrador <laughs> that are fucking oozing. <laughs> Trump is unbelievable. Did you see what else he tried to take credit for? We also have more women serving in Congress than at any time before. And they all fucking hate you. <laughs> Every one of them would like to come at you with a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> By the time they're done with him, it'll look like someone's throwing a bag of watsits into a wood chipper. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite bit of the speech was definitely this. Trump invites boy bullied for sharing his last name to State of the Union. And what did that little hero do? Thank you, and thank you for being here. Thank you very much. <laughs> that is the greatest nap ever. <laughs> He fell asleep bullied, he woke up a hero. <laughs> you showed Trump who's boss. Did I? <laughs> I was dreaming about an octopus endeavor. <laughs> now, talking to heroes, this is exquisite. Check out the look Buzz Aldrin gave Trump when he started bullshitting about space. This year, American astronauts will go back to space on American rockets. He's like, he's going, how is he getting away with this shit? <laughs> Trump's not going to space. He can barely understand Earth. <laughs> Donald Trump mispronounced Bhutan and Nepal as button and nipple <laughs> in a White House meeting. <laughs> Christ, can you imagine those meetings? Where the hell is Uck? I'm looking for Uck. <laughs> it's UK. <laughs> Rum num nugga 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 nugga. Trump's speech contained one lie every two minutes, but this was definitely Whopper of the Week. White House says Trump's tan is the result of good genes. <laughs> and that's because his mum's from Scotland and his dad is a fuggler. <laughs> Remembrance Sunday marked 100 years since the end of the First World War. It was a time to reflect on the immense sacrifice of all those fallen soldiers. And what did Donald Trump do? Mr. Trump pulled out of a visit to a cemetery for American servicemen and faced criticism when his officials blamed the rain. <laughs> yeah, what a disgrace! Last weekend was a time to honour those who gave their today so we could have a tomorrow. And he can't be fucked because of the drizzle. To quote my friend at Rangtown. What an absolute cunt. <laughs> The man is a petulant baby. Did you see his behaviour in the press conference when the midterm election didn't quite go his way? Mr. Excuse President, me, that's enough. Mr. President, I had one other Peter, question, if go. I may ask, on the Russia investigation. Are you concerned that, that you may have I'm not concerned about anything with you the Russian investigation because it's a hoax. Are you, that's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? <laughs> Mr. President. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Go ahead. In Jim's defense, I've traveled with him and watched him. He's a diligent reporter who busts well, his Well, I'm not a big fan of, of yours either. <laughs> what I want to know, where does Trump get off calling someone else a rude, terrible person? <laughs> that reporter never put kids in cages. He's never defended white supremacists. Trump calling you a terrible person is like being called a bad parent by a cuckoo. <laughs> it didn't end there. Look what happened next. The White House has accused a CNN journalist of assaulting an intern. In a statement, it said it suspended Jim Acosta's press accreditation because he placed his hands on a young woman. <sighs> Let's have a look at this brutal assault. That's well, enough. That's enough. enough. Pardon me, ma'am. Excuse me. Christ, I've seen more contact in a Christian porno. <laughs> you ever seen Debbie Does Damascus? <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly as good as Dongs of Praise. That... <laughs> that is not contact. This is contact. No, where's the goalkeeper going, mate? Get fucking going! 
Now, the midterms threw up some bizarre results, but this was definitely the strangest. A brothel owner, Dennis Hoff, wins seat in Nevada despite being dead. <laughs> now, let me repeat that. A brothel-owning pimp got elected despite the fact that he was dead. <laughs> How did he do the press conferences, like, for a Ouija board? Was Derek Akora there? Hello? He says, vote for me. He says he's going to fix education. What? He says he's got a girl. He's having a threesome with Marilyn Monroe and Barry Chuckle. <laughs> what do you think, though? If we can elect the dead, that would be brilliant. Think of the options. We could have Noy Bevan to fix the NHS. Brunel to fix the trains. Steve Jobs, so I could ask him, why'd you get rid of the headphone socket, you fucking madman? <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> now, elsewhere, Democrat Beto O'Rourke has been called the next Obama, but he lost to Ted Cruz because they ran an advert taking him out of context. Beto O'Rourke wants to be a senator. F that. So he's showing up across Texas, sharing his wit. What the f are these guys doing? And his character. I really f up. If Beto shows up in your town, maybe keep the kids at home. Because this is f up. Beto O'Rourke, he's showing the f up. It's ridiculous. You can make anyone look bad like that. That is why I can never become an MP. Imagine what they do to me. Russell Howard wants your vote. But before you give it to him, we've got some questions. Did he have a healthy childhood? Me and my cousin used to play a game called Tickle Piss. Tickle Piss. What's his attitude towards charity? I built a well. I should have been giving Lenny Henry a handjob. <laughs> Don't worry, kids. I need second. We're sorry, Lenny. Who would vote for Russell Howard? Rapists, murderers, paedophiles. Don't be one of them. Don't vote for Russell Howard, unless you want to be tickle-pissed. 